there's so much about this story I gotta unpack. Yeah. And a huge part, when you agreed to come on the show, I was like, he's gonna help more people than he realizes because your story, you know, everybody wants to talk about I hope so. the destination, right? The destination, and this is for anybody who's watching this on video, anybody who's listening to this on podcast form, streaming it on iTunes, uh, any of the, 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 the streaming platforms. The destination, it's great. Have that in your line of sight. Mm -hmm. But the journey, the journey is what, that's what, that's what the greatness is. That, that, that's where, when I listen to your story, and I, and, and, and I start to want to unpack it. I'm like, this is where you can help people because you just said, I'm an attorney. I passed the New York bar, which is one of the hardest bars to pass in the mm -hmm. country. You're obviously an extremely bright man, obviously. Mm -hmm. But you also said, I got a felony and flunked out of law school. Mm -hmm. We got to go back there because People don't realize you can fall. You can hit some potholes. Your yeah. life does not have to be pristine, no matter what it is that you're going through. Mm -hmm. You can always pick yourself back up and say, today is a new day. It is a blank slate. It is a fresh start. And as long as I put my mind to it, I can achieve great things despite what my yesterday looked like. So number exactly. one, how did you, 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 you're bright, you passed the New York bar. How does a man who passes the New York bar first time flunk out of college? And did that uh, felony have anything to do with it? No, so the first time I, I went to law school, I, um, I flunked out because I wasn't focused. It's real simple. And I, I, I want, first of all, I 100% agree with you like that it's imperative for us to share our stories as black men so that we can, there's other black men coming behind us, younger black men or other black men dealing with the same set of circumstances that, you know, for some reason or another, maybe, you know, may feel like that they want to give up. The one thing that um, I never did that I think that I, that, you know, I've also heard like Jay-Z say is like he never gave up, like they just kept coming. You know, and I never gave up on my dream. I never gave up on the fact that I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer since I was 11 years old. Now, mind you, I made a bunch of bad decisions along the way that made my journey a little bit more difficult and challenging, but I never felt like it was unachievable, right? And, um, and I found, you know, I did the research, you know, to find, you know, ways to get around my circumstances. So I flunked out of law school. Uh, when I flunked out of law school, there's an ABA rule that says in order to go to an ABA accredited, American Bar Association accredited law school, you need to sit out for two years. So I sat out for two years. During that two year time period, I went down to Virginia and I was uh, basically, you know, running around and going back to the, to the lifestyle that I kind of had a long time ago. I was, you know, in the college life mm -hmm. and I was selling weed whatever, and I had, I got caught with a pound of marijuana. Um, and I got convicted in Virginia for, for possession of marijuana with intent to distribute, right? And um, during that two year time period that I had to sit out. So I then went, um, you know, prior to me getting actually, actually getting convicted and pleading to, um, to the charge, cause they, they offered me, they were like, look, you, you can either take the charge or you can go to trial, we got you dead to rights. You know, like your fingerprints are all on the bag and all of that. So I was like, all right. So I, I, um, I, I, I took, you know, a plea. Uh, and my plea was unsupervised probation for three years. And then during that three-year time period, I, I went back to law school. But prior to me getting convicted, I, you know, I, I actually went, um, applied, reapplied to law school and, and, and asked the dean um, who, of the law school. I had an interview with him and asked him if I could come back. And I acknowledged the fact that the first time I was there, I was immature. I was running around, I was 22, 22 years old. And I would have been out of grad, graduated in, at, at 24, 25. And um, I just, you know, I was living life, man. I was in Houston for the first time. I was having a really good time. And that wasn't what I was there for. I was there to focus and, 
and um, and hyper focus on on trying to be the best lawyer I could be, which I realized that 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 flunking out of law school and going through the the hardship of trying to overcome this felony, having this felony on my record, was um was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because I was able to uh, one I I I I, I regained the confidence in myself that somewhere lost along the way, I kind of lost, right? And then uh, secondly, I, um, I, um, I, I learned that I needed to share my story. I learned a part of my purpose. Part of my purpose was to do this and to educate other young, young men, black, white, green, or yellow, who had come through similar circumstances, specifically my young black men, you know, who, had, who, who were consistently you know, told that they are not worthy or they are not as good as and you know they can't they don't have the tools at their disposal to succeed and um and i you know i try to share this with people as many times as i can that you all everything that you want to do is right here in your mind everything that you can do is right here in your mind if you believe you can you can right and it'll happen it's you know you you know like you know so nonetheless that was my story i i um i um I uh, I came you know I, I came back to to New York and um and then I I worked for the guys and I then I became a lawyer and and here we are. Okay, so there's a couple of things that stand out. Yeah, that I love. Number one, I love the fact that somewhere in that moment you realize this happened for a purpose. It wasn't mm -hmm. random. Like mm -hmm. like this needed to happen. Number one, I need to get focused. And number two, I have to share my story. Right. This will help somebody in my future. Even though you had not done great things at that moment, you realized at that time there was a purpose for what I went through. But I love right. the fact that you said you spoke to, and I think it's your dean at the college, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, where you took accountability. You yeah. own Look, I came down here. I was immature, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a young man. It's my first time in Houston. Yeah. I, I own it, 100%, I own this, which I think so many people have to listen to that. Have to listen, it, it's, you, you, can, you can get over those bumps. Yeah. You cannot, yeah. you can't fix what you don't acknowledge. You can't. No, you cannot fix the one hundred percent. You can't fix what you don't acknowledge, man. Like so, so there's a, an accountability, and there's a there, like there's there's a maturity that you have to do that I had to do personally. Part of that was acknowledging my faults, acknowledging where I went wrong, and not not trying to blame anybody else, not trying to say, well, you know, so and so gave me a test, and they shouldn't have asked me this question, and if I had to did this, then I, you know, none of that, man. At the end of the day, you have to own it. And that was that was the only reason I was able to become a lawyer as well. Like, because after I I um I came to New York and I, I passed the bar, I still had to pass the moral character and fitness test. And what that means is, is that the, the bar, in order to become a, a lawyer in New York, is two parts. One, you got to pass the bar. The second part is you have to pass the moral character and fitness test, which basically means that they do a background check on you. Right. And they ask you, they say you have to submit a questionnaire. And the questionnaire is, have you ever been convicted of a crime? If you have, tell us the circumstances and all of these th different things. So um, in that in my statement, I had, you know, from my research, I realized, you know, I was afraid because I was like, OK, if I submit this paperwork and I showed it and I, I you know, had this felony because I literally just got off probation when I graduated from law school. So um, if I submit this and I may, I may not be accepted. So I actually hired a lawyer and I, I, I wanted him to represent me. And, I, and he was, you know, he submitted the paperwork for me to get, um, to me, for me to get an interview with, uh, with the New York State Bar. And then um, somehow or another, maybe like a year had passed, a year or two had passed, and I still hadn't submitted my application. And one day, I was just like, you know what? I had an epiphany, man. I was, uh, I was, I just woke up at like four or five o'clock in the morning, and I sat in front of the typewriter, and I typed up my statement. I didn't send it to the lawyer. I sent it directly to the bar, and I sent him a copy afterwards. And he was, you know, he called me. He was like, yo, what, you know, 
what, what's wrong with you? You're an idiot. You're, you know, you're gonna make our job harder, blah, blah, blah. Um, but for whatever reason, it was my truth and I needed to share it. And that's how I felt. And I submitted it. And I, and then maybe like a month or two later, I got a, a call and it was from the New York bar. And they were like, okay, you gotta come to Albany. We have a, um, an interview set up for you. And I went to Albany, um, got there. I sat outside this room. It was like a, a, a like maybe like a line of people, um, not that many people, but maybe like 10 or 15 people sitting outside this room waiting to get interviewed. And I didn't know what was going on at first because I thought it was just a normal interview process. But then I realized these must be the people with blemishes on their record that actually have, are coming here to talk because the people that were coming out of the room were like, you know, the people before me, I said, there was this older white woman that came that went inside and she came out and she was just bawling and crying and her family was like, what's going on? They were, she was like, you know, I got to try again. I was like, oh God, you know, so I was looking at it like, oh, this is going to be, you know, I, I was prepared because I was, at the, at the time I knew if I didn't pass this interview, I, had, I needed to submit an, an appeal to a three board panel. And um, so I was prepared to do that too. But I went to the interview room, and when I went to the interview room, the, the guy um, that interviewed me, he was uh, the president of some bar association in, uh, in upstate New York. And um, he, he brought out my statement. He was like, you know, listen, I got a couple, uh, he was like, I want to talk to you. I was like, what's going on? He was like, um, I've never, never read a statement like this before. And I was like, oh, you know, I just sat there and listened. He was like, I got one question. I was like, I was like what is it? And he was like, um, are you, have you been practicing law without a license? I was like, no, not at all. And he was like, okay. And he just went on and he was like, you know, this, your story is so unique. He was like, you know what? Um, I, I really a, a, admire the fact that you took accountability for, you know, your mistakes. And, 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 and I encourage you to share your story with other people. He was like, you know what? I think you'll be an excellent addition to the New York bar. And um, the only thing is you must share your, your story with other people. And I was like, you know, I was like, thank you, sir. And, I, and that was it. I walked out and he said, go downstairs and you'll get sworn in. I went downstairs out of those 15 people. It was maybe like three people, three of us got sworn in that day. And when I tell you, this is back in the payphone days. So I walked out, I walked around the corner, went to the payphone, called my parents and they were crying on the phone. But, but then I got my certificate to practice and I drove down to back down to Manhattan and went to Ed and Reggie's office. It was like, you know, and so I, we had a celebration and um, yeah, so it was it was uh, it was a thing, man. But it was but to your point, accountability is 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 key. And and I I say I say that even to the people that I represent to this day. If I you know like you know especially these young men that that are, that find like themselves in in these kind of criminal circumstances. And you and I had talked about TK and 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 some of the other people you know some some other people that we know that come across these kind of circumstances. And and you're like you you try to help them where you can. And tell them like, listen. Part of it, part of you getting to where you want to be, is taking accountability for the things that you've done that may be holding you back. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, Feel free to share. Peace and love.